Noun gender in Italian can be a pretty confusing topic, especially for English speakers, since you don't have it in your language. But I'm here to help you understand how it all works, so you can start using it correctly. When it comes to noun gender in Italian, you probably have already heard the general rule by which masculine nouns end in O and feminine nouns end in A. That is a pretty good guide and it works for most nouns ending in O and A. There are, of course, exceptions. But you might have already noticed that there are a lot of nouns in Italian that end in E. So what about them? Well, the problem is that there are both masculine and feminine nouns that end in E. So how do you know which one is which? Ciao, I'm Manu Venditti, the founder of Italy Made Easy, where we help people like you successfully learn Italian all the way to fluency, if that's what you want. You can find out more at italymedeasy.com. But now, let's begin. Cominciamo. All right, I'll start by giving you a handy tip. For nouns that end in E, it really helps to learn the noun with its matching article. Although I'd recommend doing that for all nouns, pretty much. Seeing as many of these nouns don't always follow a clear pattern, learning them with the article will help you remember their gender. If Italian articles are another topic that you are struggling to wrap your head around, then make sure you watch this video where we talk about Italian articles. So here are 10 very common e-ending nouns that don't follow any particular pattern and that you should know as a beginner of Italian. Let's start with masculine nouns ending in E. Il fiume. Il mare. Il paese. Il nome. Il cane. And now five very common feminine nouns ending in E. La chiave, la parte, la canzone, la fine, and la luce. For these really common nouns, it's simply a matter of memorizing their gender by learning them with the correct article. Another important thing when it comes to the gender of these types of words is to remember what noun gender is actually all about. We did a whole video that explained the what, why and how of noun gender, so if you haven't seen that video yet, I recommend you watch it at the end of this video. Basically, the main deal with noun gender is that it is a way of classifying nouns into grammatical categories based on how they behave grammatically. That is, what effect do they have on the sentence and the words that refer back to them? This is really handy to think about, especially when it comes to nouns that end in E, because you can't go off the simple rule that masculine nouns end in O and feminine nouns end in A. So if you aren't sure about the gender of a noun that ends in E, then look at how it behaves in the sentence. What does it do to the words that refer back to it, such as the articles, adjectives, past participles? The form that the surrounding words take will tell you the gender of the noun. Of course, you can only do this if you are listening or reading Italian, but it's a handy way to instantly know the gender of any noun, including the ones that end in E. Let's take the word piede, for example, which means foot. Nothing about piede and its form tells you whether it's masculine or feminine. So let's see how it behaves inside a sentence. Il mio piede sinistro è gonfio. Il mio piede sinistro è gonfio. Can you guess the gender of piede based on all the other words in the sentence? Both the adjectives and the possessive end in O. And there's a definite article il. So piede must be a masculine noun. What about the word vocale, which means vowel? La vocale E può essere aperta o chiusa. We see that both the adjectives end in A and there's the definite article LA. So vocale must be feminine. And now let's look at a few handy tips and cheats that can help you know what the gender is when you actually want to use these words. Here's the thing that almost nobody knows. It's all about the letters that come before the final E. A lot of Italian nouns that end in E come with a certain combination of letters preceding it. These combinations of letters form patterns of word endings that usually categorize them as masculine or feminine. 
Learn this small number of easy to remember word endings and you'll have a much easier time knowing the gender of any word ending in these letters. This method is not completely foolproof, obviously, Aww. but it's the best trick you'll have to getting the gender right 95% of the time, which is pretty good. So let's start with masculine nouns ending in E. The first group is words that end in ORE. ORE. These can be nouns that represent a male's role, a profession, or when a male is the doer of the action. When I say male's role, I mean that the role being talked about is performed by a man and not something stereotypically masculine or anything like that. So let's look at these masculine words that end in ORE. Il dottore, that's a male doctor. L'attore, a male actor. Lo scrittore, male writer. Il fumatore, a male smoker. Did you notice that these words correspond with the English word ending in OR, as in doctor, actor, or ER, as in writer, smoker? These are the same word endings that we often use in English to say that someone is a doer of something. There are many more examples of these ORE ending nouns in Italian that correspond to ER or OR nouns in English. Many of them are also considered cognates with English. What are cognates, you ask? Cognates are words in Italian and English that have the same origin, have the same meaning, and look and sound very similar to each other. For example, look at these masculine nouns that directly correspond to English or nouns. I bet you can guess their meaning before I even say it. Il creatore. Il creatore. Il narratore. Il narratore. L'editore. L'editore. Again, remember these words in the masculine gender are only used when referring to men. So far, all of these ORE nouns have been referring to humans, but there are also a lot of non-human masculine nouns that end in ORE, like il colore, l'amore, il fiore, il cuore, il valore. Perfetto. Now, the second pattern that I want to look at is masculine nouns that end in ONE. Il furgone, which means van. Il Giappone, a country of Japan. Il fifone, a coward. Il mammone, a mama's boy. Il calzone, calzone. There's not much more to say about this particular one, as it's pretty straightforward. Notice that in every word here, a consonant comes before the one. Furgone, Giappone, fifone. This will be very important for later when we see a feminine pattern that looks kind of the same. Remember that there is one very common feminine noun that ends in one, we saw that earlier, la canzone, the song. So as long as you remember that canzone is feminine, so like an exception, then you'll be right with this rule that words ending in one tend to be masculine. Molto bene. Now we're going to take a look at some common patterns to identify feminine nouns that end in e. The first word ending pattern for feminine nouns ending in E is SIONE. SIONE. It is pretty safe to say that words ending in SIONE are always feminine. LA STAZIONE, the station. LA LEZIONE, the lesson. L'INFORMAZIONE, information. L'EMOZIONE, emotion. I'm sure you notice that most of these words correspond exactly with the English word ending shown. Pretty much every word that ends in shown in English has an equivalent Italian word ending in sione in Italian. This is why learning cognates in Italian will really help you grow your Italian vocabulary very, very quickly, because it's fairly easy, right? You could probably tell me the meaning of 99% of sione cognates just by reading them. Learning the sione equals shown pattern for cognates can even help you guess how to say an English word in Italian if you just make it up. And you probably would be right most of the time you're guessing. For example, how do you think you'd say the word for portion in Italian. La porzione. What about option? L'opzione. Now, as I keep saying, these patterns are not completely foolproof, but you will be right in most cases than not. 
For example, the Italian word vacazione, which does exist, doesn't mean vacation, but it refers to the act of leaving a position, a job, vacant. The word for vacation is vacanza. Anyway, the important thing to remember is that sione words in Italian are always feminine nouns, as are the words in the next group. And these are words that end in sione. Just like the words that end in sione, these are always feminine. Let's look at some examples. La confusione, confusion. La passione, passion. La versione, version. L'illusione, illusion. You can see the exact same pattern here as we saw with words ending in sione. That is to say that words that end in sione in Italian usually have cognates in English ending in sion. You probably didn't even need a translation to know the meaning of the words I just said, right? The next pattern of word endings for feminine nouns is for words that end in trice. Trice. These can be nouns that represent a female's role, a profession, or when a woman is the doer of the action. They are basically the female equivalent of the masculine ore nouns that we saw earlier. For example, l'attrice, that's an actress. La scrittrice, that's a female writer. La fumatrice, that's a female smoker. This Italian word ending, trice, is the equivalent of the English word ending tres, or simply s in English, that it's used to refer to a role performed by a woman. Words like waitress, mistress, duchess. Now, although those particular words don't have a trice equivalent in Italian, the idea is the same. Now, I'm sure you remember the masculine ore cognates that we learned at the beginning of the video. Editore, creatore, narratore. Well, see how you go transforming them to the feminine. So we have creatore, which in the feminine is Creatrice, la creatrice. Il narratore, in the feminine, is la narratrice. And l'editore, in the feminine, meaning a woman who's editing. L'editrice. It's interesting, though, that in this case, English doesn't have a tress form for those words like creatress, narrate dress or edit dress. They sound awkward, but it would be cool and it would make sense if we had them in English, right? But we do have them in Italian. Anyway, there are some other non-human nouns ending in trice, like we saw for the masculine ore version. These are usually feminine words again. For example, la lavatrice, which is a washing machine, la cicatrice, which is a scar. Finally, the last word ending pattern that I want to tell you about that identifies feminine nouns ending in e, are words that end in ase. Ase. To be fair, there are only a few words in this group, but they are quite common and it would be pretty handy to learn them and to be able to recognize them and know that they are feminine nouns. These words also have cognates uh, matching words in English, and these are words that in English end in a's, pronounced a's or a's, depending on the word. These are words such as la frase, sentence or phrase, la base, base, la fase, phase. It's worth pointing out that there are nouns ending in e that can be either masculine or feminine. That is the same word that can be either gender. How is that possible? Let me show you what I mean. The nouns that we're talking about are nouns that end in ante and ente. Again, ante, ente. There are a lot of words in Italian that end in ante and ente, and most of them are either masculine or feminine. They're not going to change gender. But when these words refer to people, to a person, then the gender is determined by the person that the word is being referred to. These nouns are actually fairly easy to learn, as you only need to learn the one word and then use it to refer it to either a male or a female and just change the article depending on the gender of the person. Let's start with the words ending in ante. Some examples are il cantante, which is a male singer, but then we have la cantante, which is a female singer. Il birbante, which is a male rascal, and la birbante, which is a female rascal. And the second group that behaves similarly are words that end in 
ente, for example, il paziente, that's a male patient, la paziente, that's a female patient, il cliente, a male customer, la cliente, a female customer. As you can see, these nouns are not changing a to o or o to a. They simply just have the one form and what changes is the article. And of course, what also would change are the adjectives referred to the people. So for example, il cliente maleducato, la cliente maleducata. And that's it for today. Grazie mille and I will see you in the next video here on Italy Medisi. Ciao, ciao.